Well, praise the Lord, and thank you for tuning in to Word of Deliverance Radio. My name is Melanie Beatsmo. And I'm Michelle Patton. And we want to welcome you to the program. Um, we would like to tell everyone, those that are listening to the program, if you could please get a King James Bible. And if you have any ways and means possible, get a strong concordance. You can go with this in the scriptures. We believe that it is our duty to prove what the speaker is saying. It is your duty, being the listener, being the hearer, to prove what the speaker is speaking, to make sure that what the speaker is speaking is lining up with the Bible. Because if we do not prove what we're listening to, um, there's a great chance that can be that it can be wrong or it can be error. We are living in a society where many things are twisted. And when I say many things, I'm specifically relating to preachers and so-called doctrines. Something's wrong. By what we're hearing um, coming from the pulpits and mega preachers and prophecy books and such things as that, a lot of them are not lining up with the Bible. Um, a lot of the so-called statements that these so-called preachers are making um, seems to be of their own statements, and it's not lining up again with Scripture. And when we say lining up with Scripture, we mean backed up by the mouths of twos and threes. And so again, we ask and pray as we're speaking today that you get you a King James Bible and a strong concordance. Please note, when we are speaking, all of our words that we speak, they're not opinionated, but they're Bible-based factual statements. And we ask that you prove it, what we're saying. So without further continuance, Michelle, where is the content of our message going to be for the listeners today? Yes, we're going to be in um, Revelations in chapter 22, and first of all, we're going to be talking about um, Jerusalem. We're going to talk about New Jerusalem, who can enter and who cannot enter. Okay. And then we're going to tell you why God is going to bring down New Jerusalem and not this Old Jerusalem. What's going to happen to the Old Jerusalem? So what the listeners are going to understand with this message is the difference between the physical Jerusalem here on this earth mm -hmm. versus the new Jerusalem that's going to come down from heaven? Yes. Okay. And so you said it's in the book of Revelations? Yes. And the book of Revelations, we can find that it's actually God's retaliation or God's vengeance mm -hmm. um, that's coming to pass. And yes. it's coming. God's going to come back and he's very angry. Mm -hmm. And when he comes back, he's coming back to punish Yes. Where is he coming back to punish? According to that word, um, coming, mm -hmm. where he says um, he's coming after the Lord's coming. Mm -hmm. Is it 3952? Yes. In your Greek Strong's concordance. And in that, it says Christ Jesus coming or return to punish Jerusalem. Amen. Or finally the wicked. Okay. And so when you're stating God's coming back or Jesus Christ is coming back to punish Jerusalem this is the physical Jerusalem here on earth right now yes and so what you're saying is um, a lot of people have been taught that this Jerusalem is God's holy people and is habit inhabited by God's holy people and they're God's chosen people and many people actually think um, that they're doing a good deed mm -hmm. if they're supporting this Jerusalem, going along with this Jerusalem and fellowshipping with this Jerusalem, when at the end of the day, they're not God's people. Right. They're actually Satan's mm -hmm. people, like kind of like his headquarters, if that makes sense. Yes, you'll find in Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9, it talks about um, that when Jesus himself says specifically to these churches, he says to them, I know them that say that they are Jews, but they do lie, and they are the synagogue of Satan. You'll find that in Revelations 2.9. He says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. This is talking to the Smyrna church. Mm -hmm. And he says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You'll find that in Revelations 3, 9, here in the Sardis, or the Philadelphian church. Mm -hmm. He says, Behold, I will make them 
of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. And also you'll find another reason why is because remember in Revelations 11 uh, verse 8, it talks about the two witnesses, their bodies, sh their dead bodies shall lie in the street. This is after they are killed. Mm -hmm. When Satan comes, actually physically comes and um, is kicked out of heaven. And it says that he has a short space in Revelations 12. Mm -hmm. Well, th this time at when he comes, he shall make war with them and shall kill them, overcome them and kill them after the 42 months and after they finish their course yes and then their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which is spiritually called sodom in egypt where also our lord was crucified so that being jerusalem and we see here that he's called on sodom in egypt for a reason amen because of the homosexuality and because of the bondage and amen. the sorcery egypt is not only known for their bondage but also for their sorcery and their enchantments that they used upon the people okay so you just gave a scripture also stating that this jerusalem is not god's holy people but you use that revelations of 11 8 to prove what is actually taking place in that city yes this city you said spiritually sodom in egypt mm -hmm. can did you elaborate a little bit about why god calls it when i say god this is his word and mm -hmm. this is why this is called the book of revelation mm -hmm. because this is the revelation of jesus christ mm -hmm. and he's revealing it unto his prophets or unto us being his people um, by his spirit the spirit of truth mm -hmm. and making known what is actually taking place Amen. and when you stated this revelations 11 8 you talked about spiritually sodom and egypt can we elaborate a little bit more on why it's called sodom in egypt yes well sodom of course you know in genesis 19 verse 4 it talked about how from the least to the greatest were basically wanting to um get those angels and sodomize them okay and this is they were known for sodomy and homosexuality and of course we know that god destroyed them with fire and brimstone okay and so when you see sodom that's always referring to the perversion okay and you'll even find in isaiah um where it talks about how he had called them the rulers mm -hmm. of Sodom and they were of Gomorrah. Yes. Because of they was always um very into that perversion mm -hmm. and uh, Israel never repented of it. You mm -hmm. find that in chapter one verse one? ten. Yes. That's one place. Yes. It's different places also where God is referring to this Jerusalem as being like so Sodom. And that's also in 310. Yes. 38, pardon me. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And it's also found in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 10. Yes. And I'll show, um, it says, uh, Isaiah chapter 3 verse 8 in Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of the Lord of his glory the show of their countenance, countenance doth witness against them and they declare their sin as Sodom and they hide it not woe unto their soul for they have rewarded evil unto themselves and if you notice this Sodom mm -hmm. and how they hide it not, this is referring to they're proud of it. Yes. This is not something they're keeping in secret that they're not ashamed of, mm -hmm. but they're proud of it. This is why they have the gay parades over there in Jerusalem Amen. every year mm -hmm. is because they're proud of their homosexuality. It's something that they don't hide. Amen. And so God is going to bring judgment upon them for that. And not only for that, but also... The main reason, too, is because they, in Revelation chapter 18, verse 24, talks about, And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all that were slain upon the earth. Mm -hmm. She's guilty of killing of all the prophets of God. You'll find that also, another scripture to back that up, Matthew 23, mm -hmm. verse 35, where Jesus himself had said that they were guilty of, 
of all the bloodshed mm -hmm. and it talks about how they have shed the prophets mm -hmm. and the saints of God yes and you'll find in verse 35 it says that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias the son of Berechias whom you slew between the temple and the altar and look at verse 37 please yes Jesus is talking directly to who to Jerusalem okay O Jerusalem Jerusalem Thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. So this is saying how God tried to, you know, take Jerusalem back, you know, and remember even through the book of um, Isaiah and Jeremiah where God had talked about I sent prophets to you rising early in the morning and you hearken not to me basically God was giving them an opportunity and a space and a time to repent from their evil deeds and from their iniquities and from their sins but they became a stiff necked type people and began to trust in their self trust in their wisdom trust in their money trust in their wealth and materialism in their own name and such things as that and in return after a while you know God he turned his back to them he blocked his ears unto them you know and and there come a time where you know, God's given everybody in a space and a time to repent. And after people refuse the Holy Spirit and refuse the truth, this is where people become reprobate. This is where people become turned over and sent basically strong delusions to the point where they're insane, they're out of wits, and totally basically demon possessed and occupied by Satan himself. And remember when we opened up, Michelle shared a couple of scriptures in Revelations 2 9 and Revelations 3 9 about groups of people who do profess and proclaim to be holy and righteous. And at the end of the day, they're not. They actually serve the devil himself. Yes. And also, God refers to Jerusalem as being spiritually Babylon okay in Revelation 17 18 you'll find the woman how he refers to this woman is which thou sawest is that great city yes which reigns over the kings of the earth and like I told you before in Revelations 11 8 it told you that the great city was Jerusalem where our Lord and Savior was crucified okay now if you noticed when Jerusalem took on Babylon is in when they in, in, were in exile from 605 BC okay. to 585 I think or 584 BC this is when they became one with Babylon when they were in the Babylonian captivity okay. and afterwards the 70 year after the 70 years of captivity a lot of them never really came out of Babylon but they stayed and took upon th and worshiped the gods of Babylon okay. and this is where the Babylonian Talmud was formed this is where the Kabbalah was formed and this is where the rabbis came from the Pharisees Sadducees all this came from Babylon and if you noticed an also a scripture to back up what I'm saying about how they became one with Babylon and how they became Babylon was Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 17 it says, and the Babylonians came unto her, which is Jerusalem, to show you that this is talking about Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 tells you it's talking about Samaria and Jerusalem. Amen. So Jerusalem, the Babylonians came unto her, which is Jerusalem, and to the bed of love. And they defiled her, they defiled her with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. So you see here they became one, basically, when they came into each other. Amen. And so with all these scriptures, we wanted to start out in showing the listeners who is the physical Jerusalem of the earth today. And we, we're in the book of revelations and we're eventually lord willing going to get to this new jerusalem that's going to come down from heaven but what we're doing is showing you scriptures proving 
what's taking place in Jerusalem now and showing you why God is going to destroy Jerusalem. So that's why we wanted to just give you the scriptures to let you know who the Jerusalem is, what is going on in the city, and it's actually a mystery. It's kept a secret. Yes, and you'll find in Revelation 17, 16, where this is the Ten Kings, shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and degree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God be fulfilled. Amen. And so we see here God is going to allow them to fight one another. That's mm -hmm. always how God usually works when he's um, coming against a nation. Mm -hmm. He usually has them fight one another. You would find that in Judges where Gideon, mm -hmm. he had, um, they fought one another again with their enemies amen you'll find in zechariah 14 where each one shall hold lay hold on his brother amen ezekiel 38 it talks about that they shall fight one another in verse 21 okay and so second chronicles is, is an, also another scripture where um they fought one another god's enemies did amen so not only is he going to come back he's going to first let them fight one another of course them people um, he's going to let them fight one another, and then Jesus is going to come back and destroy them. Amen. And also, when you're saying that, there's also God is going to be angry at this place, too, and he's going to actually divide the city into three parts with an earthquake, too. Yes. So God's not playing. Mm -hmm. when, when we're saying God is angry with Jerusalem because what's going on in this land, God is coming back to punish them. And I, again, it's not only them. It's, I believe it goes along with the whole world, too. Yes. Because if you read the book of Revelations, there's many things that's taken place. I don't believe it's just in one place. I believe it's all over the world. Yes. But specifically, God is going to specifically judge Jerusalem, too. Remember the scriptures that we shared talking about that great city? We'll give you a quick recap of those scriptures. Revelations chapter 7. Revelations chapter 17, verse 18, that talked about that woman is that great city. Michelle, you shared also Revelations 11, 8, where they crucified, or I'm sorry, killed the two witnesses that was spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where they crucified the Lord. And that's sharing, again, this great city and what's going on. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Revelation 17, 18, Revelations 11, 8, and go one more place in Revelations chapter 16, verse 19 and this is under the seventh angel when it poured out its seventh when it poured out the vial into the air god had spoke from his throne speaking it is done and when after god spoke there was a great earthquake such was not since men were upon the face of the earth it was so mighty and it was so great and in revelations chapter 16 verse 19 we find that great city mentioned again. It says, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Remember you talked about that great city became spiritually Babylon. And it's showing you, again, the different um, characteristics of this Jerusalem and why God is again calling them Sodom, God's calling it Egypt. God's calling the city a whore or mother of harlots. It's calling the city Babylon, Great Babylon, because it's sharing all the whoredoms or all the, the witchcraft and devil worship and idol worship and idolatry and breaking the covenant. You know, things that took place that people don't even know of because, again, it's kept a secret. And I'll let Michelle continue. Yes, and so after jesus christ comes and destroys jerusalem he's going to reign a thousand years mm -hmm. and after that thousand years is up according to revelations chapter 20 mm -hmm. he's going to loose sa satan from his chains and he's going to deceive all the other nations again mm -hmm. and they're going to come against christ jesus in the holy city and they're going god that's when god rains down fire and destroys them yes every one of them mm -hmm. and this is where the judgment sits he judges everyone cast them all into the lake of fire including satan and we know that the false prophet or mm -hmm. yeah the false prophet and the antichrist 
is already cast into the lake of fire before the millennium yes. starts. So we see here Satan is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Then death and hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever's name is not written in Lamb's Book of Life, they will be cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Then in Revelation 21, this is where the new heaven, he says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this is kind of like a wedding gift Amen. for his bride, saying mm -hmm. New Jerusalem. Yes. This is the New Jerusalem that's going to come down uh, from God out of heaven. And it talks about, and I heard a great voice out of he heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall the be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. And I like that because those that get in covenant with our lord jesus christ those are the ones that are going to be saved those are the ones that are their limbs book of life amen and those that are not in covenant guess what their names are not written in the lamb's book of life yes and they won't make it into the new heaven and into the new earth amen they will be cast into the lake of fire amen let's go to a scripture that's going along with what you're saying about you know those that keep the covenant you know this is the wedding gift that's prepared for the faithful it's prepared for those that you know love the lord and are making themselves ready to see the lord you remember that scripture we would always share in first john about you know it doth not appear i can't quote it verbatim i know you do a lot better job than i do at quoting it but you know when you keep your heart ready to see the lord and you have this hope to see him what does that scripture say? First John 3, 2 and 3. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is, even as he is pure. Amen. And to us, this is like a wife you know, prepares herself to go meet her husband for that great ceremony day. You know, think about the wife. She gets her white dress, pure and clean, fine linen, you know, and is prepared for that marriage. And this is what we're supposed to do while we're here on earth. You know, don't wait till it's too late to try to go buy your garment. You no, know, don't wait till the door is shut before it's too late. But why God has given us an opportunity, God has given us a time to make ourselves ready. And if we have been found faithful, chosen, and righteous, so to say, then we could be a part of this marriage supper. Let's look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saying of the prophecy of this book. What we have read to you today is part of keeping this prophecy in this book. This book actually actually exposes who the true Babylon is. It's not of God. It's actually the habitation of devils. We've explained to you who the whore is. And that's written in this book. And that makes us blessed at understanding who the true Jerusalem is. It's not, so to say, this Jerusalem physically in the flesh that's corrupted and taken over by people that's not of God. This is why God's going to destroy this Jerusalem. And this is, again, why God's going to have this new Jerusalem come down. And I believe this new Jerusalem that's coming down is part of our wedding gift. Because it tells you that even in Revelations chapter 21, did you read verse 1 and 2? Mm-hmm. That, that goes along with the scripture that Michelle read. This new Jerusalem, this holy city that's coming down from God, is prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is part of our wedding gift. Amen. You know, everything that's former, everything that's here on this earth, it says heaven and earth is going to pass away. God is going to come back, and he's going to shake the heavens, and he's going to shake the earth, and he's going to melt this earth with the fervent heat. And when Jesus comes back, he's not playing. He's coming back to execute judgment. But you know what? One thing that we have to look forward to again is being part of that new Jerusalem, being part of that new heaven and new earth. And when I stated Revelations chapter 22, verse 7, 
may we look at the word keep or keepeth and it shows you the idea of how we can make ourselves ready it shows us that there basically is going to be hardship there's going to be times of persecution there's going to be times of suffering there's going to be times that we have to separate ourselves from people family friends loved ones some sometimes it's those of your own household that you have to separate yourselves from but in doing that you will be blessed you remember there was a scripture talking about the disciples found in the book of john that said lord we have left all to follow thee and in return jesus had told them that they're going to have basically more than enough god will provide everything we need now and he will also give us eternal life but as we use that word keepeth, this is a very informative word because it shows us what we have to do to be found ready. It shows us what we have to do to be prepared and shows us how to keep ourselves in the ways of God. For when he does come, guess what? We are prepared. So those who have a Bible Strong's Concordance, let's go look at that word keepeth in Revelations chapter 22, verse 7. The number for it is 5083 in your Bible Strong's Concordance in the Greek section. And we're gonna define what it actually means. Yes, it says to guard from loss or injury, properly by keeping the eye upon. Remember that reminds me of Peter. Mm -hmm. Remember he got out on the water and he says, Lord, if it be thee, bid me come. And he's, Jesus says, come. And so he went out on the water and he started walking on the water with Jesus. And mm -hmm. then he saw the boisterous winds. Yes. And they was, and then he started to sink when he saw it because he took his eyes off of Jesus. Amen. And so when we keep our eyes upon him, that keeps us from falling. Amen. And it says also to from guard to guard from loss or injury. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say, um, down at the bottom, it says to fulfill a command. Amen. Remember God, uh, Paul, he finished his course. Yes. And this is what we're, uh, we're here on this earth to do, to finish our course and to fulfill the commands of God, what he has us to do. Yes. And also, if you go back to that 5083 in the Greek section of your Bible, Strong's Concordance, it says figuratively to keep unmarried. Figurati figuratively is meaning like... um symbolizing like symbolically meaning to keep unmarried there's a scripture in Isaiah 54 verse 5 it talks about thy maker is thy husband you know well, we're supposed to be married to God so to say do you remember the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 5 that gives a great illustration of Christ in the church mm -hmm. it's like a husband and the wife we're supposed to keep ourselves set apart for the Lord and I believe that you know part of keeping ourselves is keeping ourselves unmarried and when i'm saying unmarried i'm talking about from the world you know there's many events taking place in the world whether jobs sports whatever it may be that tries to separate us and get between our marriage so to say between god and separate us you know and part of again keeping ourselves set apart for the lord it takes discipline it takes true um I already said discipline. I don't know another word. Dedication, you may say. Mm -hmm. It takes dedication. But, you know, when we set a, a husband and a wife, you think about a wife loves her husband, and she wants to do everything she can to please her husband. And so we ask this today. Ask God to search your hearts, you know, and ask God if there's any way that we're lacking in pleasing him that he please shows us. You know, ask God to please help us because we want to be a part of that new Jerusalem and we want to enter in. And if we're not prepared and do not have our garments ready, it tells us that that person without a garment will be cast into the lake of fire. We pray that you please got something out of today's message. And if you have any questions, any concerns, or even need prayer, we'll do our best to get back with you. Our address is 518 Pleasant Valley, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. Again, it's 518 Pleasant Valley, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. Please mail us a letter. We'll even put you in our midnight prayer box. And we thank you for your time and your love and support. And may God go with you.